give it more up for a reason. So you actually see. There's the shot. Me personally, I'm not going to do it for educational purposes because I want you guys to see. But in the shop, this is what I suggest. Wherever your tools are going to be closest, if you're right-handed, you want to stand a little bit with your right hand towards your tools to be able to reach them quickly. If you're left-handed, you want to stand in a position where so your left hand is actually closer to these tools to be actually reach them quickly. Whatever that position is, stand in that position and don't move. What you're going to do is you're going to use your right mechanical tools to turn the chair. So you're going to use to turn the chair. The reason why is because I want to keep my most productive tools working and this is where they're working. And here's the thing, I outlined it in this handout that I gave you guys. It's a thing called revolution cutting. Revolution and cutting is whatever tool when the blade set, a position you have that blade set at that particular time, do as much as possible with that particular blade set and position at the very time that you start to use it. Don't do everything independently. Don't do one side and then continue to do everything. This looks great. Now I gotta do it again. All right, do it. Everybody say that? So I do I'm gonna see the reason why I would suggest that one. Has anybody in here ever flown on a plane before? Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever felt the plane trying to level itself out when it lands? Mm -hmm. More often than not, whenever we work independently, we end up becoming like an airplane pilot. We end up doing one side, and then you go back and forth trying to fine tune it just so you can get it right. And you're spending more time doing this than you actually did actually creating each individual side. Everybody understand what I'm coming from? If you want to have greater control of what you're doing, and you want to have what I call symmetry, because here's one of the things that consistently happens, with, especially with doing fades. Whenever we focus on one side alone, and we perfect that one side, and we don't have the right clipper calibrations, and that's the meat of this class that we want to talk about. If we don't have the right clipper calibrations that we utilize, we're not going to end up with that same symmetry that we want consistently on both sides. If I don't get to it with after this explanation, that answer for which you ever be going through right now, because I know he's, I, I, I took the carpet from under his world of safety. And he's like, what? Come on, man. Nah, nah. But I'm not trying to call you disrespect. I got, I got you. I'm not trying to disrespect you because I'm pretty sure you do some great haircut. All I'm trying to do is stretch you to be a better version of you today. So, what I want to do is, I'm going to create a U sheet over his ear where the back of his beard is now removed. This is the way I can have a strong fade here and still have a strong outline here. Because keep, keep in mind, I asked him these clear questions. How dark do you want his ear outline? Because that was going to dictate how far I was going to come over with this particular transition. Mm. If he said, I want to keep the outline strong here and I want to fade out to nothing, then I would have brought this line over here. Everybody follow me? But because he said he wanted to keep the outline, I'm only going to keep it on the back of here. And because he said he wanted it close here, I know that I want to go ball with that transition there. All right? So now, because I know he wants this particular section to be strongly gradual, I mean, strongly faded, but he wants to keep this particular portion dark, I still want to do a transition in that particular section as well. So that section of hair, I want to make sure it's removed. And what I'm not going to do is take my trimmer blade on my BGR Plus and make hard lines within that section that I want to be ball. Does anybody know the reason why I don't want to work mm. in that particular? Mm. So I'll take that else. Everybody, anybody here of overtime? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a client tell you how it is to be on salary and then be forced to work overtime? <laughs> that's like that's that's like the worst situation ever. Does anybody know anybody like that? Mm -hmm. You know that. So for those of you who don't know, salary is you get a set fee. No matter whether you work 40 hours or whether you work 60 hours. So when you ask the worst additional 60 hours <laughs> without getting additional pay, it's frustrating. This is frustrating when you take the tool and make that hard line. Because that same hard line, I don't care, you did everything else. When you pull out your phone and about to take an Instagram picture, mm. it's going to be a small weight line that's going to kill you. It's going to keep bothering you. You're going to take your phone and be like, oh, man. You can go grab your clipper and then you go like this. And then you go back and forth between your clipper and your phone and your, and your phone. Because like, your phone actually shows you more than what you actually see. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> Pictures are worth a thousand words. I want to make sure the tool is completely bald in that particular section. You don't want to do the same thing on the opposite side.
And keep in mind, I'm always going to see sure within this whole presentation so I can make sure that I'm creating graduation to the next step. All right. Question I have for you, Jay. Yes, sir. Is how does this blade fill against your scalp? Uh, for this blade. Now, I work in the innate area, one of the most sensitive parts of the skin. How does it feel against your skin? It's nice and smooth. What I'm not doing is using a tool that's bumped up so much that's scratching the skin. I'm going to say that again. I need, I need this to be driven home. What I'm not doing is using a tool where the blades is bumped up so much that it's scratching the skin. It allows me to have what I call client comfort. Mm. If I have client comfort, I can move a little faster. If I have client comfort, I can confidently know and service kids, women with ease without thinking that my tools are going to hurt them. But I'm still working with tools that are strong enough to cut through the most stubborn of all hair. Gray hair. Mm. Everybody say what I'm No offense. No, no, no. <laughs> so, there's two. How many people feed with blades? Or do you feel with an adjustable arm tool? I feel with both. Both with both, 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 but I definitely, if it's a two to a three or even a one to a three, most of that cut is getting done with metal blade. Cool. I'm about to share with you a secret that the average educator won't share with you. But here's what I have to tell you. The Andes Company makes two different style blades. They make blades for what we call the BG or the Barber Division, or we have blades for AG or the Animal Division. One is for barber grooming, the other one's for animal grooming. Alright? There are blades that I like to use from the animal division so instead nice. of using the ones from the barber division. I'm only talking about the blades that are smaller. How many people like to use the Andes Master because it has the five different notches? <laughs> no, not for that reason. I just think it blends better though. Not for the five cool. Notches. cool. Some people actually like it because of the five different, different notches so you can know exactly where you're actually cutting. There's five different animal blades that I will use for fading. And I'll share with you what they are. Start off with the outline blade. So then there's a blade. There's a blade called the 30. There's a 15. There's a 9. And then there's the 1. The 30 is equivalent to the 3 0. Right. Your 15. How many know the old blade called the OA blade set? Cool. Most people, after using the 3 0, will jump to the OA blade set. The 15 is equivalent to the second notch on your Andes Master. Mm -hmm. So it's bigger than the 3 0, but smaller than the OA. You have your 10 blade. It's equivalent to your OA. But then you also have a blade called the 9 blade. This is equivalent to the fourth adjustment on your Andis Master. So it's bigger than the OA, but smaller than a 1. So, how many people have ever been in a situation where you're fading or done a transition with your blade sets and it was small, faint hairs that didn't blend as well as you wanted it to? So you picked up your adjustable arm tool just to get it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These blade sets will help you not do so. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to actually do is show you how we can mirror image what the blade sets are going to do with adjustable arm tools. So on his right side, I'm going to do it with the blade sets and clip a wook on. And then on the left side, we're going to do it with the adjustable arm tools. But on both sides, we're also going to do the technique <coughs> that I call clipper calibration. So after using the three zero blade, I mean after using the outline blade, I'm gonna use a blade set called a three zero blade set. 